Hello friends. Um, it's been a while, actually pretty much a year since I um, produced my last video and now it is time to start it all over again. Um, a lot of comments were asking when I'm gonna make new videos. So this is my starting point. I decided to take something which is not going so deep into some technology, but instead of I want to take a look today at Visual Studio 2022 Preview 7, which is as time of recording the most current version. Um, I prepared a little agenda, mainly uh, not to confuse myself. So <laughs> I will cover today some points. Um, I will try to um, take a system overview um, what uh, do I have in, in terms of hardware here running? Um, what did I do in terms of installation options when it came to bringing uh, 2022 onto my system? Um, then we take a quick look into the previous version and the most actual one, uh, mainly to uh, show you some differences in the UI. Um, then we uh, take the good old step like hello world in Visual Studio is create a new project and see what's uh, different there maybe. Um, to be honest I didn't prepare pretty much here and it will be a discovery session so I will discover this together with you basically. Okay so next will be um, I already have seen that there is a new project settings dialogue which is um, pretty important so the CS projects file had a lot of changes in the recent years and 2022 uh, oh it's it's wrong here let me just correct this can i do this live let's see yeah i can so 2022 and as a new settings dialogue uh, could be interesting to us then some new options in the options window um, then dotnet maui is obviously a big thing although uh, i don't know if you have uh, seen the news. Uh, .NET MAUI is postponed. The productive release is postponed to the second quarter of 2022. So maybe this matches the Visual Studio version better. I don't know, <laughs> but that's not. That's just my opinion. Hot Reload is something which is um, reported all over the internet currently. So I will try to make a demo of this and see how practical it is, and then. Uh, open uh, I don't know what this means actually a, a thing a bigger mm -hmm. I think it's just open a bigger project <laughs> and compare the performances between 2019 and 2022 this that I'm pretty interested in that to be honest let's see I prepared there something for this and then my beloved resharper I don't know if you have resharper but resharper is something which should uh, in terms of performance, um, participate in the in this improvement that 2022. I don't know if you if you have seen the news. 2022 is a 64 bit only process, Visual Studio, which is pretty new, because all the previous versions of Visual Studio were 32 bit, which um, restricted the memory to four gigs of RAM, basically. And I want to see if ReSharper and tools like that participate in the performance. Let's see what we can. Uh, experience here. So that's it. That's my agenda. Mm, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, let's uh, quit um, PowerPoint and let's go over to uh, just start it up. So you can see here at the bottom I have 2019 on the left and 2022 preview the yellow one um, on the right. And before we dive in, let me hit the Visual Studio installer, which is obviously in German because I'm a German guy. So um, first of all, you see I have the latest update, updates installed for both of them. I have uh, the preview seven here running, which uh, was installed yesterday. I don't know when it came out. And uh, probably the most interesting thing here are my installation options. So if I go to change here, you can see mainly I've installed the ASP.NET web development, Azure development, .NET desktop, mobile with .NET. Um, universal Windows platform and uh, I do a lot of uh, SQL Server stuff that's why I have data storage and I don't know what's in English but look at the icon 
So, and the main thing here, which is important if you want to take a look at this Maui stuff is if you go and click um, to the mobile development, you have to check the .NET Maui um, uh, here on the right side in the details. Uh, it's not checked automatically. That's, that's because this is currently, as you see in the icon, it's still Xamarin, which is meant by mobile development and .NET. And now .NET MAUI, because it's preview, this is the German word for preview here, Vorschau. So .NET MAUI is preview and that's why you have to check it on your own. And then some different stuff has to uh, be installed. It's pretty well documented when you go to .NET MAUI on Google, you, you'll find a lot of stuff. So I already installed it and um, it should run. Okay, that's my options some words about my system maybe task manager what do i have here so let's go to the performance i've got uh an intel what the heck where can i see my processor uh isn't it here okay it's an um quite seven oh quite seven eight it's not the newest one uh it's like two or three years old um i have 32 gigabytes of ram in this machine, um, an SSD, and uh, basically uh, here are the 12 logical cores, um, and that's it. And now you can kind of compare this to your system, maybe, um, the things you see here. Um, okay, that's my system. <clears throat> and now let's, like, uh, let's take our first look to 2022, and let's open it. So a new um, splasher. I don't know if this will be the final one, I guess so. So preview will be removed then later. And as you can see, I already did some stuff here and I have some recent project. I obviously opened it already. I did it, uh, but um, I did not ex um, discover all the stuff which is available. So basically nothing big or no big changes here. I think it's a little bit cleaner now. Uh, you have continue without code. Let's do this for the moment. And let's do it on the right side. Um, so I'm doing this because I will do the 2019 on the left side. And now I have um, to apply my window layout, to be honest, to the default one on both sides. So that I have one screen layout. So let me just make a little bit of place. I hope it's, it's readable still. So the first thing which is um, marked everywhere is, let me zoom here, the icons that have uh, changed. So this is the 2019 version here on the left side. And on the right side, you can see the icons now have outlines more or less and um, like a translucent fill, something like that. So they seem to be a little bit lighter now. I don't know if this is pretty important, um, but you know, it's not that bad looking, I think. Uh, just a moment. Um, I'm just checking if my sound is correct. Yeah, it should be okay. Um, I'm just a little bit confused because uh, my Camtasia is not showing the, the sound. But anyway. So, okay. Um, the next thing you notice is, or at least I noticed, is at the bottom. Um, it's not so noisy now because the old 2019 had this color code uh, here showing you that you are currently in edit mode, which now for logical reasons, I think is not highlighted anymore. And you have some more control here at the bottom. The bell is this one. And now we have the repository selection here, which obviously goes to my local repositories. Um, and git and uh, gives me the availability to quick select repositories here which is neat i don't know if i need it that much but this is another question okay i have a preview version i got this um and now let's uh take a look um how maybe the consumption here let me just try if i get this straight devanf so this is uh, currently uh the 2022 which is I don't know, um, like 400 max already <laughs> without any project loading uh, compared to the DevInf actor, uh, the old one, which has 180. I don't know if this is representative. I don't know, mm, but it's doubled 
the um, memory. Okay, let's see how this evolves. Okay, fine. Let me now concentrate on um, this thing and let's go over to uh, what can we do? Some settings options. So the first thing I already discovered a little bit, let me highlight this for you, is the tabs and windows section, which could be pretty interesting. Um, uh, and the option I mean here is this one, Col colorize document tabs uh, by project. I already selected it. It wasn't selected. Um, and this is pretty interesting. Uh, let me show what, I, what this means. And let's go to find new project for the moment in order to discover it. So find new project is a little bit cleaner again as it was before. And uh, another thing which is obviously there are new project types. And because I installed MAUI, we will take a look at it later. I have MAUI here. I didn't watch all the options. I think Blazor got some new stuff here, some new project stuff. And uh, I didn't overwatch everything here. And um, maybe this is a good point in time to explain to you that I had some strange behavior um, after installing this, the newest updates. For instance, one thing why it might not so be, um, not be a good idea to put it on the production system side by side is when I updated all the SDKs behind 2022, um, at some point my Visual Studio Code tried to comp uh, started to complain about uh, some SDKs, which are preview SDKs, which came with the installer, which are not compatible uh, yet with some um, uh, extensions, which is to the code needs for C Sharp, for instance. So that might be a reason for you to be a little bit, you know, or hesitating uh, in terms of putting this on a production machine. Okay, but that's just a side note. Um, let's kick off with a new console app, which is, you know, obviously the thing to do. Let's call it uh, console app, but in my project folder next. And let's take a look. .NET 5, which is the current one I'm using. .NET 6 is about to be released, I think, next week, because the Ignite conference will be next week. But anyway, so uh, this is uh, basically what it is. Nothing excitingly new at the first glance, but you see here the tab is colored. So what this means is, uh, when I add another project, let's do another console app. However, this is not so, uh, so cool. But now you see, now I have different projects, console app one, console app two, and then I have different color codes for my files. So I can easily discover that this thing comes from the yellow project with the console app two. Would be nice if it would be, you know, colored here a little bit, I think. Uh, so that I can match it um, in this way. I have to remember that this is yellow and this is pink or whatever it is. Uh, but still a nice feature, I think. Um, uh, not so bad. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing I want to take a look uh, at is the project settings dialog. So this is um, basically uh, right click on the uh, project and then properties. This is the dialog I mean. And just to show you the difference here, this is a new one. And if you don't remember the old one, let's uh, do a console app here too. Just a quick one so that we can put them side by side again. So this is this next, create the same framework. And now maybe put it again side by side. So this is the old view. Okay, nothing or no big changes here. I think one thing was, if I select this, as you can see, oh, you see what I see? No, I first of all, I thought that this highlight color would match this one, but that's not the case. I just had a wish and it didn't came true. So anyway, so now the highlight changed. So this is blue. This is not blue. I don't know. The theme obviously changed. Okay, cool. Um, and now something here. What is it? IntelliCode completion. Oh, that will be cool. We will take a look at this too. That, that's something new. I know. Um, that's pretty clever. Uh, I don't know if I like it, but I think I will. But anyway, let's go back. And now here the properties of this thing. This is the old dialogue. As you can see, uh, this dialog exists here for 
years. Um, and this was the thing where you can go to build and stuff like that. And now it's kind of different. I have to, yeah, here you see the new dialog, which is an endless scroller, or not an endless scroller, but a scroller which acts more like a website. You see, this is basically just one window in sections. And it, first of all, it confused me a little bit, but it's actually pretty cool. For instance, um, output type, .NET 5, whatever, whatever, whatever. What's cool about this is that, let me see where this is. I can manifest, I'm searching for the default namespace, which is pretty important to me all the time, platform target, nullable. So first of all, there was no option to enable nullable in the old UI. Uh, I think there was no option. If you saw it somewhere, advanced, maybe here, no, nothing here. So you had to know what to put into the uh, CS project file behind to enable nullable. That's not a big deal. If you don't know what nullable is, don't, um, don't, uh, you know, um, be frightened. It's uh, a cool thing which you can set in, um, at compile time to give you warnings when you don't check for nulls, whatever. Um, so you have a lot of options here in the dialogue and I think this dialogue is meant to be um, extensible in a, in a more easy fashion than the left one because this is actually a new UI which is not so easily to extend and I think when new options will come in into new .NET uh, frameworks they will be able to extend this more easily. Okay. So let me take a look. What I wanted to see was, now I can't find it, output, events. I think I'm too deep already. Strong naming. No, I don't want it. This is packaging. This is pretty cool. Nougat package uh, thing. No, I'm already too deep in. Okay, let, let's see calmly. Uh, let's maximize this again so output type target os data project assembly name that's what i wanted to see so assembly name and default namespace so first of all uh, i did it differently in the meantime so in my case it would be like something like my company name no in the default namespace i used to use my company name then uh, whatever let's say samples blah, 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 in order to get a unique uh, or full qualified domain name. And if I know, now go to the file, it's uh, just easily inside here. So if you, obviously, if you go into this dialog and you change something, which is, um, let's say I change this from the default, it will be a trigger to put it in here. As you can see, uh, this came now, and now I have this thing running. Okay, so now this is pretty cool because it hints me to the right way to do it. So uh, in former versions, like on the left side here, in the old version, let me bring it in again. If you go to the application, you have this assembly name and default namespace and th those are bare strings which are generated when this project is generated. Um, so there is not the MS build uh, variable inside of it, which is pretty cool because when I rename the project, it will be renamed here again. I like it. It's, it's, it's more standardized, let's say it this way. So I learned something here too. So and this dialog now um, is different. Uh, I think something we have to get used to, um, but it makes some stuff easily accessible, I think. Okay, cool. The new dialog. Um, let's go over. Let's take a look at the debug experience. If we run this application, what will happen? Oh, honestly, hello world. Okay, cool. It's ready. Let's do a console read line. So he's not leaving this so fast. Uh, read line. <clears throat> let's hop over. And by the way, this is already hot reload. We will take a look at this. So. Now we have console read line. We have uh, the diagnostic tools. I'm running an enterprise uh, edition here currently. Um, maybe it's a good idea. Oh, now it's dark red here at the bottom, which is in the dark mode, not so aggressive like it was. Not bad. I like it. 
Uh, locals, nothing to see here. Containers, well, that's just a view I don't need. Okay, let's stop this hidden breakpoint and let's construct something. What happens? Oh, here you can see already uh, this thing uh, and telecode uh, come into place. And telecode is kind of um, cool. Let, let me show you this at the moment. Let's say we need something uh, more, um, you know, expressive and um, cock something. Okay, and let's assume uh, we get something in, something else. Okay, just a constructor. So, as you can see here, this is already this auto completion. So, he's guessing what could end uh, or what could lead to valid code here. I think that's the idea. So, if I just run tap or hit tap here, he's uh, doing it, and uh, obviously in the in the um, um with the target to ge to get rid of the compiler warning so this is something i could do but it's too simple so let's say if and now already he's guessing what might be the next so maybe if i run it if he thinks maybe he wants to check the parameter something else so good idea if it is not oh let me do it again i have to see how the, well, if it is this one and by the way if you think oh well that's cool what kind of font is this uh, i will tell you of course what kind of font this is they have nothing to do with the new visual studio i'm using here jetbrains mono uh, jetbrains mono is kind of a cool font and there's even a better one i'm just thinking uh jet hello my friend oh yeah uh, j Oh, no, 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 By wait a moment. Let me do this again, tools, options. And now I here have to do NF. NF stands for nerd fonts. I don't know if you know what nerd fonts are, but nerd fonts is not just the font, but brings in some cool stuff in terms of um, icons or symbolic thing things. So if I do this, nothing changes. It's still JetBrains Mono, but the nerd font style, if just a side note if you want to know what you can achieve with a nerd font we have to take a look at the windows terminal the new you know shell and you see here the cool little symbols and stuff like that and if i go and do an ls you see here the github and maybe if i go to github and do an ls maybe um what, what is here next fluent and can I, yeah here you can see like something like nerd fonts which is the font here in the terminal can help you if you have the right powershell modules to even get symbolic items in your output in the shell which is pretty cool um if you are interested in this just hit um maybe scott hanselman has some good stuff about this let me google that for you uh, scott hanselman nerd font what is going on how to make a pretty prompt. Well, that's a good starting point. He's explaining all the stuff, good post, um, easy to follow. And yeah, that's basically it. Okay, that's what uh, what the nerd font is. And that's why we have this freaking symbol here. So uh, anyway, uh, what I can do now is, and he's already guessing. I'm just typing th and he says, oh, I see you want to have a new exception um, thrown and then I want an argument exception. Um, and now he is, uh, is he giving me a little bit more? I don't know. Now he's done. Uh, argument out of range exception, maybe. I don't know. So this is IntelliCode um, completion in action, which is this one. And I think I can turn it off this way what happens now if yeah it's off ah see and now i can turn it on again wait for pause of typing before showing well that's a good idea actually is it maybe i'm waiting no now it's not coming ah i see let's do this off go into the line and what now if 
and now it's not coming again. I don't like it. Ah, yeah. something else is okay. Cool. So now the default option is obviously the best <laughs> because I don't know how to handle it yet. Okay, cool. So this is that. Uh, pretty cool in Telecode. This is how it works here, and it it can do a lot of more stuff. I'm not sure how this setting and tools like Resharper will um, act when they come together. I, I'm not sure. I, I like Resharper. I need it for code formatting and stuff like that. I try to replace it because it's such a huge memory eater and performance eater when it comes to startup. I know all this, guys. I even tried Rider uh, from JetBrains as, a, as my development environment. I don't like it. To be honest, um, colleagues of mine, they like it. I'm not uh, in that, so I'm a Visual Studio fan. I don't know what I do with this. But that's the state of the art. I will use ReSharp, I will use Visual Studio. Okay, cool. Um, now, what I wanted to show is what happens if we say var i is 10. That's how I run it. And now, console red line. That's a good idea. Thank you for that. And now, let's pause here maybe or pause here and now let's run this so what i want to test now is edit and continue so or hot reload when i do 12 uh what happens now can i do this just like that yeah that's because i could do this all the time i think maybe console app is not the best thing to show it yeah maybe we'll switch over and show this what is the third color let me add a new project and let's go to ASP.NET Core Web API. Why not? Uh, web application. Yeah, I don't mind. Non HTTPS, Open API, create. And let's do this. Now I get this one. Ah, I see. Cool. So let's hit this as, as a startup project. Is there something new here? I don't know. And let's go and hit F5 and watch the swagger, which is generated in the new templates automatically. Let's try this on. He works. And now it works, not he. It's my German. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and now what I want to do is I will, I would like to, yeah just get 10 of them well what's happening can i do it right now like just replace it and then hit this and is it working yeah it just works so hot reload is basically i think better in ui projects so i'm doing this for a purpose here don't blame me for that HP doing web api web app let's do this uh, I think it's it's more what we want. So let's do this as a startup project. And now hit F5. So now we get this. And in former version, it was a problem to reload this. Uh, first of all, let us go to the view now. I don't need you anymore. Okay, let us go to the page and then the index page, which should be this one. Welcome. And let's do welcome to my screencast, which is a good idea. So nothing happens. Even if I hit F5, nothing happens. And now what you should do is hard reload. Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, what is going on? Hard reload. What should I do? Hot reload on file save. Good idea. Just do it. And now what? It's not working or what? Uh huh. Screencast. Hot reload. Nothing. Hmm. I expected more, to be honest. Mm, no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. What should I do? Restart application? No, that can be. Yeah, that's not what hot reload is. This is. Easy restart. Okay, that's that's an order. Back to this version. No hot reload. What I'm doing wrong. Hot reload on file safe settings. Apply hot reload on file safe. Yeah. Dot net and C hot reload. Okay. Um dot net hot reload means this had nothing to do. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the backend stuff. And let's say, okay, then view data is home page. Uh, start. What now? Home page, F5, home page. That's not impressing at all, to be honest. I expected it to work just like that. So what is Google saying about this? Uh, ASP.NET, hot reload. Uh, maybe VS 2022. Uh, update on .NET Reader. Okay, so what is this telling me? .NET Desktop, ASP.NET. Uh, okay, those are some demos. Supported app frameworks and scenarios. Here are the highlights. Uh, starting app with the debug is a basic real experience works with most types of .NET apps frameworks versions. This includes .NET, .NET Core, .NET 5, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But you're using debugger when using to, but not using the debugger. For example, using Control F5 to start the app. Whole reload is now available even without the debugger when targeting most of the. Okay, uh, the most type of scenario .NET Maui Blazor. Those includes the project types that editing Razor files and CSS. Okay, in ASP.NET apps, it also includes. Okay. So if this is the case, is it the case with a .NET 6 app? Wait a minute, .NET 6, is this true? Is this what I'm missing? Okay, let's do another project, which is exactly what I wanted to do here, uh, just to you know pretend that this is on purpose and not because I'm dumb. Uh, okay, .NET 6 long-term support, create. That's my first .NET 6, I think. I I didn't know that held reload will depend on the .NET framework version, but anyway, let's hit this. What is happening? Memory. Okay, a new port. Cool. And now, you know what? Now I think I should be able to go to the pages and change something. Yeah, I didn't hit anything. It's working. So it's .NET 6. Ah, now you know. You have to go .NET 6 in order to get whole reload, like, you know, the seamless experience. Ah, I see. So that's in .NET 6. Cool. So I can do hello here. And now I see hello without any doing. That's cool. That's cool. I should definitely switch to .NET 6 just for this feature, even if it's nothing more. I will. So, okay, cool. But now that I've created a project with, what is it? One, two, three, four, five projects. It's already summarized there, Alex, done. And now I close this and I close this too. And now I reopen this one, the solution. And I want to see how this behaves. Okay, this is there. Let's hit F5 and let's see how fast it is. I know it's not a, you know, scientific correct measurement. But okay, it's, it's uh, acting like it is. Now let's open this one with the old Visual Studio, open project solution. And now open it from the 2022 projects. This was console app one, I think. Yeah. And let's open the same thing here. Okay, what will happen? Uh, is it already? No, it isn't. Set a startup project, hit a five. And well, ah, you see the difference? Here is Visual Studio, the old one is using this thing from .NET Core. And now I think hot reload won't work because, oh, it was here already. Let's see, let's see. Is it hot reloading? What is this? Apply code change. Yeah, do it. No. Five? No. Is it the correct window? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. 
Uh, let me double check. Okay, in because here are some windows open. I could be yeah, the old the new one is opening this console window too. I think. Let's see. Yeah, it does. It wasn't just. It's just not visible or is it present? Okay, cool. And now here, hot reload works. We already know this, and it won't work for some reason. Although the button is here, the hot reload button was there. It's not working. In the old one at least in the same way okay interesting cool but now that i have opened it in both studios let's see what the performance is so how can i measure it let me take my iphone here um, and now let's try to do a little stopwatch measurement which is completely objective and scientifically correct and now hit the button I don't know what what should I do. I will open this and click and start it. And I will wait till the image is here. My my head is here, which is, I think, a good point. Wait a second. Wait a second. Still not there. Still, am I waiting in vain? No. Okay. 19.3 seconds. Uh, let me hit that somewhere. 19.3 seconds. Uh, 19.3. Uh, VS2019. Okay, let's go over and do this for VS2022. And let's see if it's quicker. Uh, okay, I need my stopwatch again. Okay, and go. We again wait. I don't know if this is something. Come on. Come on. It's 13. Yeah, it is. I don't know if this is 0.2, but the 0.2 don't. Okay, it's it's a little bit quicker, I think. Even if this measurement is, you know, it's not the best one in the world, but anyway. And now let's see what the memory is doing here currently. Mm, so 2032 bit is using it's 918 and it's still using a lot more memory which could be because it's uh, you know uh, maybe it needs it for performance optimization whatever um, and I have to uh, tell you I currently have my resharper disabled which is pretty important for the resharper fans let me take a look it's disabled currently so that will be interesting if we do it later on Okay, cool. So what do we have now? Um, we have uh, this stuff. We had took a look. Okay, hot reload is kind of cool, I think. Let's recap. The settings dialog is not that bad, but not that much important. We have some new project templates. Okay, um, I think there will be a lot of more stuff. But now, uh, before I go on, let's just close this one. And let's clone a repository. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to take one big repository, which is or chart, or chart. And let me copy the link. And it is on GitHub. GitHub. It's a content management system written in .NET Core. It's Orchard Core. And I will clone this one to the correct place, uh, which is in my repos. I have a GitHub folder here, please. And now uh, it's Orchard Core. So I'm using the clone technology or uh, stuff inside of Visual Studio. And I will do it and I clone it. And now you can see, hopefully, the reason why I'm uh, doing videos again because my internet connection, by the way, I'm so proud of it that I got it. I have to share it with you. So let's do the way. You know what I mean? So it's not the best I can get uh, because obviously something is running a better on. 
Normally I get 800 to 900 here because I have one gigabit symmetric, which I love it. It's, it's, it's just cool. Um, and that's why I decided, oh, I can do it again. Um, okay, um, because my internet was so poor that uploading my videos even, not to mention streaming, was nearly impossible. Okay, now let's open the solution. Double click it here. And you will see it has kind of a lot of project and it's this Orchard thing is also suggested by Microsoft itself. And uh, I already tested this um, before I did the screencast today. And what I find interesting was the little hint that was coming here that I might need some plugins. This one, based on your solution, you might need to install extra components for full development experience. Cool. This is kind. Uh, this remembers me a little bit, or um, I, I think of Visual Studio Code, which does the same thing here. Let's see what he wants us to install. Is he telling it, or is he just doing it? I don't know. What is this? Oh, you can switch to the light mode directly from the installer. Nice feedback. Cool. So what he wants is he detected that um, the web development tools for .NET Core 2.1, which is not supported uh, anymore, is somehow referenced in this project. I don't want this. Uh, cool that it works, kind of. I don't know how is he, how is he knowing this? because he looks into the NuGet packages, I think. Okay, anyway, I don't need it now, because what I want to do is um, I want to rebuild this and see how long this takes. So it's remarkably, it's a remarkable amount of time. That's what I'm going to. And I want to compare some stuff here uh, between the old and the new one, which means I have to, hey, senor, I have to open it. Why can I dock it on the right side? I can uh, go on and dock it on the right side. So right again and left side. Right is my 2022 preview. Here it is and it's working. And now I do close solution. And what we can do now is we can compare, first of all, if he ever finishes, first of all, the open time. Let me see if I can do it. Okay, uh, get ready. I don't know if it's a good idea to do it in the same repo, but anyway, so the first build ran here on this side. And now let's see, come on, succeeded file, close solution. So first of all, let's open it in 2019 file, open project solution. It's in GitHub or chart. Okay. Let's open this one. Three, two, one, go. And let's say I want to measure the time again the, uh, when my uh, image comes. Oh, he's not responding. Can I see this? Oh, it's already there. Damn it. Uh, project loaded, ready to use. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it again because I was too lame. Close solution. This is closing. Closing is almost the same speed as opening. That's not logical to me. Oh, he's busy still. You see, I, I can't select anything. Oh, recent project. Okay. Orchard core. Let's run this. And now let's do it until the thing comes into play. So let's assume that we just wait until this window disappears. That's our trigger. Come on. We are at 30 seconds. Okay, now. So 34 seconds. 
VS 2019 uh, open board chart solution. Okay, cool. Let's close it for the moment. So there's no, you know, uh, unwanted oh, closing is even slow. Okay, anyway, uh, file recent. It's again Orchard. Three, two, one, hit it. Okay, let's see the window. Mm, seems to be already quicker. And that's it. <laughs> if this is, I don't know, is this 30, oh, I forgot 34 seconds, something like this, uh, versus. Uh, what is it 9.2 seconds in 2022 so seems to me if this is saying telling me that you can actually edit already i don't know uh, to be honest and hit f5 and whatever but nine seconds to get responsiveness here and let's close this one how fast is it yeah it's it's remarkably faster because when you you remember as i closed here on the left side in the old one yeah i think it's 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 faster as it was i think so okay did a lot of stuff so let's see what the memory says now uh open this one open this one in parallel see what happens left one is blocking okay cool uh so now I opened it, the left one is still thinking about all the stuff. I don't know if they are intervening each other. Obviously they do. So the UI thread is not updated on the left side. I don't know if it will come again. So what do we have? We have now, oh yeah, we have a lot more caching going on, I think in the 2022, which is okay to me because RAM is not an issue currently. What I mean with that is, I'm willing to pay for RAM uh, if you know it pays off, kind of for me. Um, what, which wasn't the case in the last years, I got more and more uh, hardware support, and the last notebook I had was a freaking precision notebook with Xeon processors in it. I don't know. I just bought it in desperation for getting a little bit more performance in Visual Studio, which didn't brought me that that well because. Uh, Visual Studio was not scaling with my hardware. That's basically what I say. So now I already have more than four gigs running here, uh, which pretty much should be impossible on the on the old Visual Studio stuff. And what's funny to me is that you see the CPU here. Nothing's going on in the background. Uh, nothing obvious for me, but he's taking 40% and my CPU is burning. So the performance is up without me doing anything uh, in Visual Studio. So obviously a lot of stuff is going on in the background and here you see, you see that four gigs. And um, I think basically what ha what's happening is could be that he is shuffling on the on the uh, SSD or whatever, because he's not able to address that much memory. He's shuffling out. Okay, that's interesting. And, and I did nothing so far. So what happens now? Uh, is it is it going to be quieter? somehow it's some place okay nine four percent it's slowing down it's slowing down something is coming down here i don't know what interesting okay cool now they slowly start to get in a decent amount or in a, okay let's do something which is obviously test explorer Let's dock this on the left side here and let's do the same here because I know that this thing had has a lot of tests. Okay, let's see <laughs> what does it now. So it's busy. It's busy. It's going busy. Okay, he detected already. So let me perform run all tests. So this is going to prepare the tests. And now my CPU is the limit. I'm pretty confused. I didn't know that my CPU was the limit until now. But anyway, so this is not fair, obviously, because the 2019 is still consuming. But 
it's maybe not fair in terms of scientific measurement, but on the other side, I have to tell you, I think it's a pretty realistic test because um, I'm not doing a two Visual Studio instances on the same project that much, but you know, I don't want to give it time to think because this is a scenario which hits me. I'm, I'm, I just have multiple Visual Studios opened and I have uh, different tasks running in it and I want to see how this performs and uh, not giving it the time. And it, obviously it's, is it doing anything? I don't know, guys. I'm pretty confused here. It's telling me it's already ready and nothing is green or red or whatever. Is this normal? I don't know. Let's see. Now he's blocking, by the way, he's blocking. He can block too. <laughs> That's what we learn here. He's blocking two. Oh, that was just the build. Oh man. It was just the build, which was showing me the progress here. It wasn't even the test. Is this normal? I don't think so. For not run, not run. He's taking its time. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. I'm really confused now. Okay. We have to rerun this in order to see if this was preparation time or what. So let, let him finish here. It will take a while today. We are discovering this together. I think this is cool. And if you don't think so, what can I do? Okay, test run finished. Okay, cool. Let's do it here too. Uh, run all. Is it rebuilding or restoring? I don't know if Visual Studio 2019 can use project stuff or caches from 2022. <laughs> it's kind of weird what I do here. I don't know if this is valid. Item saved. Is he building again? Yeah, he builds again. Okay, he doesn't care. Let's hit the task manager again. Mm, details. Man, my PC is going crazy. Uh, processes, apps. Okay, here we were. Hmm. I'm pretty confused that he's oh, <laughs> five gigs. Uh, cool. What is what is my overall? Oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm nearing to my RAM limit here with two Visual Studio and Orchard. That's interesting. I don't know, man. Is this what I have to face now? Okay, anyway, he's consuming. And I should do performance testing maybe this way. Um, I don't know where this leads to, to be honest. I didn't expect it to consume so much uh, memory and CPU. But anyway. Um, what we can do now is we can stop this from happening and do it step by step. So let's close this Visual Studio 202019. Let's close this too because I don't care. Yeah, just go. And let's do a more uh, realistic test and I will stop the timer of the session here. Let's just open this. Let's see how the performance is. Let's say Orchard Core. And now nothing else is open, okay? Nothing else but the apps I have running here. Okay, let's close PowerPoint. We don't need it anymore. It's a good idea. So he's blocking as it, as it does always. The 2019, we know that he's coming up. No reshop is running, just to remind you. Test Explorer, working on it. Thanks for the message. Okay, and then run those tests. And now, no, 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 
Okay, I just started it and I just pause until it finishes and then I come back. Let's see. Okay, he finished. He's telling me 2.9 minutes total duration for 886 tests. Okay, let's do a quick uh, screenshot here. Uh, so we have the summary here. Okay, cool. And now I want to close this one and do the same thing in 2022. And see what is going on. Okay. And I will start this together with you and then again pause the um, the recording and we will see. Okay. Please. What is going on? What do you mean? Is he building again? Build started. Yeah, let's see. We will see what the new summary is. Okay, I will stop the recording. Now he finished and we are not that much better. To remind you, this was the old run here. 2.9 minutes and it's actually the same time. I don't know what this is counting. Total duration. Uh, it felt a little bit quicker here, but not that much. So testing is obviously not going to put, um, to uh, benefit a lot of it. But this is just one case, you know. The overall bottom line here is it feels quicker. They did a good job in it. I don't know if, if it's, you know, if there are absolute values supporting this statement, but it feels quicker. So that is a good thing. Okay. Let me switch to the next one, which is .maui. I don't want to show you all the details because, of, um, to be honest, I don't know all the details. I, I know it's still pretty early to say a lot of .maui, but I want you to see what happens here. So let me create a .maui app for you to, for you to get an idea of what is going on. So Xamarin is going on, uh, obviously. If you have a .NET MAUI app, just a quick glance, you get all the platforms here in terms of uh, all the different, uh, you know, uh, environments. And if you have this, you can select here what framework do you want to use. So I don't have iOS here in place because I don't have a Mac in the network. So currently Android would be the best option. Um, you have to wait here uh, a little bit. So if you have Android, um then you g have to give him i think a little bit of time i'm not sure if because he's not uh, showing me the emulator there are some there is some stuff when which you can use let me just uh take a look here oh man android android what was a device manager yes you are allowed i think this is coming and i have a pixel with the api this should work but he's not giving me the option to run it here on this on this device i don't know why let me try it out what happens I had some problems in bringing this up and I had to start it several times. Let me see if I can bring it to work here so I can at least show you the default template. So he's building this and you have to install the correct JDK and then you have to ensure that, you know, this uh, emulator matches the correct API version and whatever. Uh, there's a lot to do. Deployment errors, no. So that's because I don't have this uh, thing running. So let me close Visual Studio. Let me reopen Visual Studio. I think maybe it will work then. I had it running on this machine. I don't know exactly what is going on. Um, what the hell? Android emulator. Now, you know, that's what I mean. So 
after I restarted it, suddenly now, because it's preview, I guess, but suddenly now the emulator comes up and he is understanding, okay, Android is uh, wanted, so I can hit the Pixel 2. As my emulator, he will come up with the Pixel 2, here it is. And now something interesting happens, which I find, so this is the emulator, obviously. And this is the old screenshot, it's, it's not the current one, it's not that fast, okay? You will see uh, the reboot happening now, but this is the emulator, the standalone emulator, okay? And he's still deploying, you see? It, it's just the last state of the emulator, you see here. <coughs> Sorry, okay, not good. Or is it? I don't know if red is something which should be. Okay, uh, and now this is happening here. Um, and I should zoom here a little bit. So you have an emulator, a live preview, XAML live preview, inside, including the phone. But as far as I can see, you can turn it and stuff like that. But you can a vertical ruler and you can, you know, see uh, measure distances, which is pretty cool. Several rulers, uh, I like it. Uh, can I move them out somehow? Can I remove them? Yeah, I can click and uh, hit delete. Then the same on horizontal, that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, if I click here, nothing happens. But if I use the emulator and click, as you can see, they are in sync. So um, they are communicating on the same or they're running on the same process and even better. Um, and this is something which was probably shown to you if you were interested. If you go to the main page here, and this is a XAML for the main page, and you go here and do the obvious stuff. And you see, I, I didn't even save, it's still unsaved here. I just typed and they are completely in sync. So uh, that's, that's pretty neat. So if this, is the performance we can expect uh, in in here that would be very very cool. Um, so uh, you can even say I think uh, was it uh, text color is red and I just type it and it's happening. You know in in both uh, versions here and this is this is cool. This is really something Microsoft can be proud of. I think or the Xamarin team or whoever I don't know. Um, I like it. That's an experience I want to have. And if you do it on multiple monitors, which I would do normally, that is pretty cool. So stop it and it stops here too. So this is basically in obviously the emulator in the window. It's still running and now it's done. Okay, uh, that was pretty cool. And now to my last part, which I am pretty interested in. Let me open or let me close the solution and I'm doing this only in 2022, what I want to do now. I'm reopening my Orchard Monster. Am I doing it? That was dumb. Let me close it again in order for this demo. And I told you, it's it's not prepared this session. I just wanted to explore everything like I would do it. It's, it's like a reaction video without you seeing me. Uh, okay, let, let me switch on Resharper. And now... Let us see what this might be in terms of performance. So ReSharper is coming up. And now what I'm very interested in is uh, this one. Uh, so the process memory here. Okay, let me, let me to be fair, close this, open it again, uh, continue without code and let us see what reach sharper does to the memory convention. Okay, well, what, what is going on? So now we have 700 max. It's not that much. So now reach sharper kicks in. I think it's done. And now let's do something which I would never suggest on a 2019 because it takes forever. You can go and have a cup of coffee. Let's see what's happening. If I open this big mama. To the RAM. So now what I'm looking at, ReSharper or JetBrains themselves, which is the creator of ReSharper, is telling the community that one of the performance issues they had was that ReSharper is running in this 30-bit 2 process in 2019 in former versions. 
And that's why <laughs> ah, Richard is complaining. Uh, no, uh, Visual Studio is complaining. And that's why they had this limit because what they do, they build up a cache here at the bottom for all the reshopper types so that they can react pretty pretty fast and they have to maintain this cache somehow into the memory and if they now can use a lot of memory which is ob obviously happening I'm, I'm not doing anything okay he should go yeah he's way beyond the four gigs now which is not possible in which is to do 2019 or should not be possible and uh okay don't do it it's it's feeling, you know, you see, I'm clicking, I clicked already. And Reshopper is doing what he's doing, but Reshopper 2 is in, in early and now he's loading the caches. It took a while, it took a freaking while. Um, and now he's processing the files and building up the cache and consuming CPU like, I don't know what. But now I can click, he's doing it in the background, he's done. He's holding like 2.1 meg. A gig of fast to 2.3 okay it's it's about the half half of the ram or was half of the ram now is obviously cleaning the memory now it's two gigs okay i don't know reshopper so one of the things reshopper can do is um what was it uh, find types uh, is it this one? Yeah. And now I can do this. Oh, it's taking time. I don't like it. So, and now he says to improve performance, some third party web files are not indexed. Okay, show. And now reshop, I have this one. I have never seen this before. And he's telling me, well, um, let's index this. And I say, okay, let's do it. And now he's obviously consuming even more. Um, what I don't know yet is how this will will feel if we are going to um, to have this in production and uh, when it's finished. I don't know. He's still working on it, and I even don't know if what happens if I close this and reopen that. I don't know if it's the same lame experience. But let let's give him time a little bit so he can calm down kind of seems to be quiet now. Let's close this and let's reopen the complete thing because that's what I'm interested in. How is the performance when I reopen a big project? Um, well, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's not reacting and now I want to click and go here and go it there and go here. And I want to see something and I want to type. Okay, that's that's faster as it was because that that was nearly impossible. Let's see if he's reacting still because Reshop, as you can see in the bottom, Reshop is not ready at all. He's building up the caches. The, the question is, is he doing it in a way that I can still work or is he Give me my way. I'm moving the cursor to see if he's blocking at some point. And what happens if I type prop? He's still reacting and the processes are running. And can I already do a sign and reformat? Is he doing it? No, senor. The key combination, the obvious thing when reshop is not ready, he can't do it. My key combination is not recognized. My key combination for silent cleanup code is not there. Um, okay, that's that's another thing. Because he's not ready, he's still building this thing up. You see? That's lame, to be honest. It's lame. I expected more. I hope this is not the end of the road uh, for jet mines. Because we need something which is better, and I, I searched for a replacement for Reshopper, which uh, gives me everything I love in Reshopper. And there are some things you can do as an extension by some Roslyn, but you know, it's not the same experience. It's um, Reshopper has some good stuff, but you know, it's still, I think, it's still working. Because am I dumb? 
I don't know, but I can't see that reshop is finished. It's it's not telling me here I'm finished. And it's still working if I see this right. I can build. Or is it simply not showing me everything? It can't be. Strange, guys. Strange. I don't know what's going on. Uh, what is going on with the RAM? 4.7. Hmm. Kind of works. I can work. Hmm. But still. How much colors can I have here in the tabs? Two. Oh, it's lame. See this? Three. <laughs> okay, guys. The build process. Now it's behaving like the old 2090, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I, oh, no, no, no. Now it's there. Oh, that took forever. I hope that that's not the thing we can expect to be in the end of this journey. Okay, uh, now the colors start to be a little bit repetitive. Can this be orange, red? Okay, still distinguishable. What's green? Nice. Now green. And what's next? Oh, now, now it's hard for me already to remember. Okay, so maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that's not unre unrealistic, to be honest, to have eight files and eight different projects open. When you have a debugging session and you're following the trails, it could easily be, but it's better than having nothing. So at least green, you know, it's not the same that this one. So that could, oh, I clicked and nothing. <sighs> I don't like what I see. But anyway, let's recap uh, what we've seen today um it's i i know it it was kind of a weird journey currently because i didn't repair anything i just wanted to have a look and i wanted to have a new um screencast uh, online and that's why it took me a little bit and i wasn't prepared it's, it was plainly what i would do um if i was not alone i just uh, wanted you to participate in my journey so i hope this was a good restart of the complete screencast ser series here on youtube i will come up with um some live sessions in the next time because now i have the availability to um to stream uh, i will try to live stream again if my hardware is a little bit uh, better than it is now and then let's see Okay, hope you enjoyed that and uh, hope you see you next time. See you.